So we're doing the Dark Eldar Pack Master Kith deck build. Uh, the Howl of Black Mane pack just came out yesterday, and so I figure most people are going to be doing uh, Ragnar Black Mane decks and exploring all of those things. And rather than, I guess, flood the internet with a bunch of Ragnar decks with such a limited card pool, um, I want to focus on another faction that I think is pretty strong at the moment and also got some good cards in that. Uh, Hall of Black, Black Main Pack. So I'm going to be focusing today on Packmaster Kith. Unfortunately, this is the second time that I'm that I'm doing this video because we started it before on uh, Conquest DB, got about 33 cards in, and then I realized that Conquest DB didn't have the new cards from the Hall of Black Main Pack, and I completely forgot that there were other places that could. Uh, that we could go to to build decks and kind of abandon it mid video only to remember right after um right after closing down xsplit that card game db is a thing <laughs> so we're going to continue on card game db i'm just going to go back and uh just discuss each card that i've put in so far it sucks that i have to rediscuss them all because now I, I hope i don't miss anything when i'm explaining why they were chosen but we're going to go back and do that so Again, same, just like on uh, Conquest DB, when you choose your Warlord, Card Game DB also just automatically throws in all of their signature set as well. So we start off with going back to the signature set. We have Kith's Chimera Masters, uh, two cost army, one command icon, one attack, two HP. After this unit enters play, put a Chimera token into play at this planet which is a very, very nice ability. You're going to be able to start flooding the board with Chimeras very early if you see this card early because it couples with Packmaster Kith's ability, Kith's ability, which I forgot to actually read again, which is after this Warlord commits to a planet, put a Chimera token into play at this planet. So first turn, if you were to get Kith's Chimera Masters out and put it down, um, that'll be two units there by itself. Then when you get to the commitment phase, you send Pat Master Kith to the same planet, and that's four units at one planet for only two dollars, or two resources, I guess you would call them in this game, which is very, very, very strong to have that many units ready to go and swing that early in the game. Um, and for those who don't know, the Chimera token has two attack and one HP. Unfortunately, there's no picture of it here. I don't know if maybe there's one on Card Game DB. It doesn't really look like they give you that option to look at the tokens. So I can't show that to you, but it is two attack and one HP. Just keep that in mind as we continue. The next card is the Chimera Den, which is a one cost support. Um, action exhaust the support to move any number of Chimera tokens you control to a target planet. Not only can you get uh, Chimeras on the board through Kith, Kith's ability, and through the Chimera Master abilities, but there's other ways to get to get uh, Chimeras out. And so being able to exhaust this card to move those Chimeras wherever you need them the most is very strong. Um, it was very, very useful both in the Gen Con World Eater Tournament um, as well as at Worlds recently. Um, next, the Pact of the Hamon Kolai is a two cost event with one shield. Um, sacrifice a unit to discard one card at random from your opponent's hand then draw two cards. It is a deploy action. Um, and I was saying before, I'm not sure what the ruling was on this sacrifice a unit portion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assume that when it says sacrifice a unit, they meant to say one of your own. If you're able to sacrifice one of your opponent's units to discard one card at random from their hand um, and draw two cards, that is pretty strong. The reason why I'm not sure on how this one is worded is because right after it it says it specifies your opponent's hand and I feel like this would have specified your own unit or an opponent's unit rather than just a unit but I'm not really sure I'm gonna go ahead for now and just assume that it's one of yours that you have to sacrifice which is still totally fine and then the last card is the agonizer of Bren um, attached to an army unit attached unit gains one attack for each chimera token you control and it's important to remember there that it's not each chimera token you control at this planet or at the attached units planet it's just any chimera tokens that are out period 
So rather than HQ, Planet 5, Planet 2, Planet 1, you're still going to get that plus one for all of them. And so those are the cards that make up the signature set for Packmaster Kith. And we're going to go ahead and jump back into the deck build. Again, just quickly going over um, all the cards that were chosen. Because I'm looking at them from my list that is in uh, Conquest DB, it's going to be in alphabetical order, not in card order, which is what I usually like to do is just go card by card and choose um, which ones are going to be thrown in. But for the sake of making it easy, I'm just going to go ahead and do it in alphabetical. So the first card that was added was the Baleful Mandrake, which is, which is right here. So three cost, one command icon, and three attack, two HP. It has ranged. This card is very strong because it has ranged. Um, your opponent's going to want to get it out of the way as soon as possible because they don't want to get hit by that three in the ranged combat phase. That is a lot of of damage to take before the real fight even starts so by getting this on the table you're kind of forcing their hand a little bit they're going to want to do some things you're going to start playing cards and whatnot spending resources um to try to neutralize this card before it gets its attack off and i think that's huge so i explained before when i'm deck building unless i know like 100 percent that i really really want to see this card i usually put two copies um, and then I see how the numbers at match up by the end of it and then make my adjustments then so for now Just two copies of the Baleful Mandrake. The next card is the Beast Hunter Witches and The Beast Hunter Witches are right here another three cost army with two command icons one attack three HP After you play an event card pay one resource to put a chimera token into play at your HQ for those who haven't had a chance to see all the dark Eldar cards they have a lot of events, they're very event heavy, and the events are very, very good. So you will be playing events often, um, and you're gonna wanna be triggering this ability and getting Chimeras into play because of Agonizer of Bren and because of um, the Chimera Den, which we discussed just a couple minutes ago. So that was another card with two copies. Um, so one two and i forgot to add the baleful mandrake one two there we go um next because it's in alphabetical order jumps over to the eldar cards so the biltan warp spiders which are here two cost army one command icon one attack and three hp reaction after this unit is declared as an attacker look at the top two cards of any player's deck you may discard one of those cards very annoying um, every time this guy attacks he's gonna do that so I went ahead and I like I said put two of those to start um, I would like to try to fit three of them because of that ability and how strong it is um, this game has three win conditions so one is that you kill your opponent's warlord two is that you win by collecting three planets with the same icon and three if your opponent draws or can't draw any more cards because they run out then they lose so not that i've seen that happen more than once i've only seen it the one time um but you're still getting rid of useful cards that your opponent has you, you get you're able to see what they're going to draw next and uh adjust their deck for them accordingly in a way that is positive for you so this is a very nice card to have it's cheap to get out he has three HP, so he's probably going to get an attack or two off, um, and and yeah, you're just, you're just manipulating your opponent's deck and trying to uh, see what they have coming before they know what they have coming and, and make your reads accordingly. So that was the first Eldar card. The next, I put one copy of Blackheart Ravager. Um, it's a very expensive card, six cost army. Two command icons, two attack, five HP. It has flying, and after it damages a non warlord unit, you get to route that unit. And what routing means is that uh, it gets exhausted, knelt, tapped, whatever you like to call it, and sent back to HQ. Uh, it's very strong, it's very expensive, like I said. I tend to only put one copy in it just because I like to have it floating around in my deck in case I do get to, get to hit it and put it on the table. Now that I've had it, some time to think about it i think i'll leave it out for now um and see what our total um unit 
lit number is at before I decided to throw that in. Maybe I would even throw in a third Biltan Warp Spider over the Blackheart Ravager. I'm not quite sure yet. To continue the Coliseum Fighters, uh, that's an auto three. And the reason why it's an auto three is because of its ability, reaction, after this unit enters play, return the topmost event card from your discard pile to your hand. We're going to see in a little bit the types of crazy events that Dark Eldar has and the reason why you're going to want to have these handy so you can keep playing those events over and over and over again and just manipulating your opponent's, your opponent's uh, side of the board and keeping them very, very controlled. It only costs you two bucks to get it out. Um, it has one attack, two HP. That's not really the important part of this card. Again, it's it's this reaction right here and the fact that it combos with calamity so whether or not you're you're the one that plays the calamity or your opponent is the one that plays the calamity and sends this card back to your hand you're able to play it again and keep getting those events back so i think that it's a very very nice card to have the next is the eldar survivalist um there was three of those and the reason why there's three of them is because that of that plus one draw and plus one resource if you win the command struggle out of planet that's really all that needs to be said about this card is that it's helping you keep your resources up um and it's very cheap again to get out on the board for that one one command icon and this if you're able to get it so that card bonus and resource bonus are very very important and because you're trying to play so many events out of dark eldar you do want to have one the money to do it and two the ability to see as many cards as you can in in a game so that is the Eldar Survivalists, which I said were three of. Um, next is the Hellion Gang, and there's two copies of those. It's a triple two, so two attack, sorry, two cost, two attack, two HP, one command icon, and flying. Pretty self-explanatory, just a nice unit to have, a cheap unit to get out on the board and uh, do some dirt with. Nothing spectacular about this card other than the fact that it's just a nice, uh, nice fodder. And it has flying, but it's not really important when it only has 2 HP. Uh, so that's the Hellion Gang. Next was the Incubus Warrior. Two of those. Two cost for two command icons, massive. Um, three attack and one HP. It's a very good card for the command icons, obviously. If you couple it with the Eldar Survivalist, you're likely going to win that planet. Um, and again, if you have initiative and you get to hit with this three before your opponent does, then it's going to, it's going to change things a lot for your opponent. They're worrying about getting hit by this guy. They're worrying about trying to get him off the board again. They're also worried about the command icon. So this card just causes a lot of worry for your opponent. Um, it is relatively easy to get off the board with having only one HP, but you're able to shield it. You're able to protect him in other ways. So I think that obviously this is a card that you're going to want to see in a game. And like I said, especially on turns where you have initiative, it sucks that he can be hit by Calamity because he only has that two, um, the two cost to come into play. But even still, if you're making your opponent play Calamity, then you're doing something right. And sorry, I didn't explain. Calamity is the card that any unit with two cost or lower gets bumped back to their opponent's hand. So that's the Incubus Warrior. Next is... The Murder of Razor Wings, which was an auto 3 for me. Reaction, after you deploy this unit, discard one card at random from your opponent's hand. It's a triple 1. You're not putting this in for the attack. You're not putting this in because you want it to tank. You're not putting it in because it's going to win command. It has no icons. You're putting it in because you want to discard cards from your opponent's hand. You want to hit those shield cards. You want to hit those linchpin cards. Indomitables and and things like that um, out of your opponent's hand and, and stop them from playing it and just be annoying is really what you want to do again if you were so lucky to be able to have even two of these and a calamity in your hand play them at two planets where you know they're not going to die um, calamity and play them again next turn and just mill four cards out of your opponent's hand this card becomes very very strong even if you can't do that just the fact that you're able to play it once twice three times in a game alone is good enough for me and i think good enough for most people so that's an auto include for me uh next is the cyberite marksman which is just a ranged low cost unit one cost army two attack 
one HP. He has ranged. Again, you want to put him on a planet where you know that you're going to have initiative. He's going to get to fire off his two in the ranged combat phase before he dies, hopefully. And even if he doesn't get to fire it off, that means that your opponent is playing resources. Um, your opponent is playing resources and doing other things to get rid of the Cyberite Marksman <clears throat> beforehand, and that's going to cost them money. That's going to cost them cards. It's going to cost them potential shields in order to do that. So it's a nice card to have, even though it doesn't have any command icons. So that's the Cyberite Marksman, which is also sitting at two currently. And then finally, Siren Z Zytlex. Zytlex. Um, putting two of her, call it three. The Siren's very strong. After an enemy unit is deployed at this planet, exhaust it. She has three, a three cost, two command icons, two attack, and three HP. The reason why she's strong, if you get her early game, put her at a planet that you need, that you don't want to be contested. You put her down, any, any unit your opponent plays is going to come in exhausted, which sucks for them. It's going to give you a chance to kill a lot of people, potentially. Or, if you use it late game, um, at a planet that you definitely need to win, so you're going for the win, or you're stopping your opponent from being able to go to the win, go for the win, and there's not many units there, and you know your opponent's going to have to deploy, you put the siren down, anything that gets deployed comes in exhausted, you know you're going to get your Kith Master there, and Kith Master's going to come with a Chimera, and maybe some other Chimeras if you get to use Chimera done to move them there. Um, and then you just it's just a, a gong show. You're just swinging off, teeing off on everyone on everyone that's there. And it's especially important to note that this game is different than Game of Thrones. So if a unique character dies, a unique army unit dies, or goes to your discard pile, you're allowed to play another copy of it and a third copy of it. Um, whereas in Game of Thrones, if the Siren were to die, the other two copies would become dead cards. It's not the case in this game, so it is important and is a good idea to have uh, multiples of the siren and I believe that that was it for the armies um, the Blackheart Ravager was a card that I decided not to put in currently and I said instead of the Blackheart Ravager I was going to go with a third Beeltan Warp Spider and leave it at that so 29 units the reason why i'm stopping at 29 or i could even deal with having 28 is because again you're getting a lot of chimeras out and i tend to count those as units because there are functional excuse me they are attacking and they're getting into your opponent's hair and causing a lot of trouble um so that is it for the units for now we're going to go ahead and look at some support cards uh out of dark eldar and then finally, the attachments and um, the attachments and events. So let me find out if there's a quick way to just look at only events or attachments type. There we go. Support. All right. So we have the Twisted Laboratory. Exhaust this, this support to treat the printed text block box of a target army unit as if it were blank except for traits until the end of the phase. That is very strong, but for now, I'm gonna keep it out um, and look at the other options. So for the same cost, Archon's Palace. When your opponent wins a command struggle, exhaust this support to cancel either the card bonus or the resource bonus of that planet this phase. That's very, very big. Um, it is unique, unfortunately, but I'm gonna go with two because I do wanna see that card. And then finally, the Altar of Torment, which is what every faction has, reduced the cost of playing a Dark Eldar unit by one, uh, two of those. And then Prometheum Mine, I don't think is necessary at the moment. Corsair Trading Port, obviously not important. Um, and the Twisted Laboratory, we'll keep out for now until we get a chance to look at the events first and see how many slots we have left. So we're at 37 cards. The minimum for Conquest is 50. So we've got 13 more before we hit the minimum. And I want to keep it as close to 50 as possible. Um, I'm, in Netrunner, I always play 46 with my runner. So maybe we'll hit 51. But I don't think I'm trying to go anywhere above that. So let's look at the events. And like I said, they have some awesome, awesome events out of Dark Eldar. 
Uh, the first one, Archon's Terror, route a target unit, a target non-unique unit. Again, routing means it gets exhausted and sent back to HQ in combat, which is huge. So Dreadnought comes out. You don't want to get hit by Dreadnought. That's cool. Just play Archon's Terror and send it back. So three of those. Um, the next Dark Eldar card, Power from Pain. Your opponent must sacrifice an army unit if able. An easy three. You just play this card and say, okay, kill somebody, please. And they have to do it. Mm, it's a very hard decision for them. The next card, Raid. A zero cost event with two shields. Take one resource from your opponent if they have more than you. I also tend to put three of these, not for the ability but for the two shields um but because we're getting pretty high up on cards i'm just going to put two and then finally visions of agony look at your opponent's hand then choose and discard one card from that hand again just like the murder of razor wings which discards from their hand just like the Bealtan warp spiders which looks at two cards from their deck and discards one this card is just meant to be annoying and get rid of important things that your opponent has and also to see all the options that they have in their hand and adjust your strategy accordingly so even though it's pretty expensive at three um, I'm gonna throw in two of those and then lastly we've got the Eldar cards nullify isn't worth putting in doom is possible I probably wouldn't go with more than one doom and superiority when a command struggle at a planet begins a target army unit at that planet loses all command icons until the end of that command struggle this would be good to couple with your Eldar survivalists um, and ensuring that you can win command struggles wherever the Eldar survivalists are but I don't know that it's one that's really necessary in this type of deck Although it is a control deck and this is a control -y card, um, just because of the deck space that's left, the three cards that are left, I don't think that it's a card that I would immediately feel like I need to throw in. Um, so in terms of attachments, the Banshee Power Sword is very strong. You discard whatever amount of cards you want to give the attached unit the same amount of attack. So if I discard four cards, um, the attached unit gets plus four attack. Which is fantastic, yes, but I don't want to be discarding cards. My own cards, not in this deck anyways. Um, a lot of the cards that you have are cards that are going to be useful. So, not to say that swinging for 7 on one turn might be <laughs> might be very useful in trying to kill the opposing Warlord, but I don't think it's necessarily um, a card that needs to be put into this deck. The Hypex Injector. After you play an event card, ready the attached unit. I've got away without having to put this card in a deck, and I kind of like not having to put this card in a deck. Um, although it is good because in the deployment phase, it comes out for zero and forces your opponent to play a card and show you what they're about to play. But I still wouldn't necessarily um, toss that one in. Lastly is Suffering. It's a one cost attachment with two shields. Attached unit gets minus two attack. I would choose this over the Hypex because of the two shields. So I'm not going to put three. I'm just going to put two suffering. Actually, we're at 47 cards, so we could just go with three. But uh, you got to remember, I'm not playing any neutrals. Um, I'm not playing any neutrals at the moment, and there's only one card slot left. So I'll leave suffering at two and look at the neutrals first before I make that decision. The only neutral that I could see myself even wanting to really throw in is uh, is Calamity. So return each army unit with printed cost two or lower to its owner's hand. Calamity would be one and promotion would be the other one. Rogue Trader and Void Pirate, also good. But I don't think I have the slots to fit those. And I have the survivalists anyways to kind of replace those guys. Um, so maybe promotion because of the fact that it has shields would be a good idea. And uh, possibly dropping one suffering so that I could get two promotions. Or playing two promotions and seeing at 51 cards. 
and start up the Cult of 51 on uh, Conquest. So you know what? Screw it. Two promotions. And we'll see how that works. So this is the current deck list. Uh, we're sitting at 51 cards, 29 units, 12 events, 5 supports, and 5 attachments. And these attachments will probably be reserved for the Eldar Survivalists. I would even like to get a third promotion in there, so I'm going to see if I can find something to drop down on in order to get that third promotion. It might even be getting rid of one copy of uh, the Siren. Because uh, there's really no other card that I would be willing to drop my third copy of, especially not in events. So I'm going to drop the Siren down to two and get a third promotion in. Even if you don't see the Siren, like she's not necessarily necessary to, for victory. She's not the linchpin of this deck, so I think dropping down to two of her, you'll still see her often enough. Pro you still won't see her every game, and I mean, probability-wise, you won't see her every game even if you had three, but you'd see her a lot more often. But I think having two, if I see her, I don't know, two, three out of five games, I'd still be happy enough with, with just that. But the promotion is definitely a lot more important because I need to be winning command. I need to be drawing cards, um, getting money, capitalizing on my survivalists to see these events. And the events and the control of this deck is really what it is reliant upon. So I think that uh, that decision of three promotions over three um, sirens is a very, very good one. So let me try this. I'm going to draw a hand right here. It's not bad. It's a pretty good hand, actually. So going down, looking at the cost and attack chart. Let's see, 27 cards with two costs, that's awesome. 11 cards with one cost. And five cards with zero cost. So that's 27, 38. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good ratio. Because I only have eight cards that are three or higher. So, I think that's pretty good. I should be able to get all these cards out whenever I want them. And then going back to the breakdown of the cards chosen, my deck is 54% units, so roughly every other time I draw it should be a unit, and I would hope that it would be a unit. And then 23% events, so every fourth-ish should be an event, and all of the events are useful in this faction, no matter when you draw them. So um, I'm pretty happy with the way this with the way that this turned out. I'm gonna play some test matches and see if maybe I can fit in Calamity um, to try to get in that Murder of Razor Wings recursion or even the Coliseum Fighters recursion to get those events um, recycling and kind of see where, where things go from there. So I'm gonna save this deck. Uh, save. Deck name will be Dark Eldar, oops. Or how about this? Kith control. And the type will be a control. <laughs> or combo control. No, it's not really a combo because there's no there's no calamity. So it's just kith control. Strategy and all that stuff, I'll leave it. And then export to Octagon, hopefully. Yes. So Kit control and there we have it so the deck is done I'm going to uh, well let's see let's see who's on octagon currently because I might save the deck test for tomorrow and then upload both videos at once so yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave the deck test until tomorrow it is getting pretty late and then uh, just throw these videos up together on my channel for those who aren't aware um, I do podcasts with the tactical squad which are at facebook.com slash the tactical squad we're also on iTunes um, our first podcast the review for the howl of black main came out last Thursday on Tuesday um, our second podcast which will just be feature myself is 
will be out and it's the core set review of the orc faction um just going card by card talking about the the out of the box synergy and and the mvps of that faction and then on thursday is the dark eldar core set box review also done by myself um and then we move into the other factions done by the other members of the tactical squad um and those should be start should start to release next week so the second week of december so hopefully if you enjoyed this you will look out for those podcasts again it it is uh facebook.com slash the tactical squad uh also twitter.com slash the tactical squad uh our gmail is the same and you can find our podcasts on the facebook group you can also find them on itunes and i think that's it currently so again thanks for listening uh thanks for checking out the video for those of you who don't who didn't have the opportunity to watch it live uh feel free to send me emails to my throne runner account or through the tactical squad to give me any feedback questions comments whatever have you or even challenge me to a game to test these decks out and uh yeah so i hope to, to hear from you guys in the future um not only do i focus on conquest but also android netrunner and not so much game of thrones anymore because i'm kind of waiting for the game of thrones second edition to drop next summer before i really continue into that game so again thanks for watching hope that this might have helped you out a little bit and look for the playtesting tomorrow so everybody take it easy have a good night